friends, happy Easter. Welcome here one and all, and this is not even your official welcome. This is your please move in next to your neighbor announcement, which is a good precursor to the Easter proclamation. Um, so please move in if you can. And uh, I'm going to ask the ushers uh, to open up all the doors if we can so that if people are seated in the gathering place, they can feel included as much as possible. I know they can see on the monitors, but I uh, just want to lower whatever barriers we can for our, uh, for our neighbors today. As you were. Amen and amen. Christ is risen. Amen. amen. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome everybody to this uh, service of worship on Easter Day here at Glenmar Church. We are a United Methodist community and our mission is praising God, growing disciples, and serving the world. Uh, on behalf of Pastor Melina Trice and our whole church, we just want to welcome you to this place on this resurrection day we want to welcome folks that are joining us in the house and also people joining us online from wherever you may be joining us uh, we join with believers around the, the globe today to proclaim a savior and uh, so welcome one and all i want to ask us uh, to sign in please on the attendance pads that you will find at the end of your rows and pass them to your neighbor it should be easy to pass today. You don't have far to, to put it. And you could pass it to the end of your row and you could even pass it back and sneakily learn the name of the person next to you. 
Um, so we want you to do that, that we might know you are here today. And if you're watching us online, we'd ask that you would sign in as well, that we might know um, that, that uh, you're with us today and that uh, our online ministry is reaching you and is a blessing to you. Uh, as we go through this service, um, we are going to have a hallelujah good time today, and we're going to ask you to participate. So, when you hear the word love, you can lift up your love sign, and when you hear the word hallelujah or alleluia, give those egg shakers a good shake for me today. All right, I, th I think y'all sound ready. I'm bringing my best preacher voice today. So feel free to try to drown me out with your praise, all right? Let us continue our worship with the call to worship. Christ the Lord is risen today. Amen. Please stand for our call to worship. <clears throat> Yesterday we thought death had won. Yesterday we thought all was lost. Yesterday we thought Christ was gone. But not today. He is filled with love. Today we know that hope is real. Today we know that Christ is here. We have, a we have a reason to hope. Christ has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please resta remain standing for our opening hymn. Christ the Lord is risen today.
morning, Glenmar. And good morning to all of those who are visiting with us today. We are so happy that you are here. My name is Julie Matakis, and I am the Minister for Children and Families. And at this time, I would like to welcome any children to come on up to hear a very special message with me today. Hi, come on up. Come on up. There is room for all. All right, I'm going to pass out some of these egg shakers so that everyone has as many of you can have them as we have them. There we go. Tell you what, as I'm talking, why don't you take one and kind of pass it around? I did. I dropped my stickers. All right. Thank you for my helpers. All right. So thank you all for coming up and joining me today. I'm so excited that you are all here. Thank you. But before we can talk about today, we need to kind of go back a little bit to Friday. So on Friday, three days ago, Jesus was put on a cross and crucified. And after he, thank you, and those who loved him and followed him were very, very sad. They felt like everything that was good in the world was gone. They took Jesus down from that cross and buried him in a tomb, which in those times was probably more like a cave, kind of like this. So it kind of looks like a cave. Then we come to today, Sunday morning. And early in the morning, several women who were followers of Jesus came to the tomb with some burial spices that they planned to, to put on Jesus. When they got to the tomb, they found that the stone that covered the entrance was gone. It had rolled away and it was put to the side. So they went and they approached the cave, the tomb, and they looked inside but they did not see Jesus. His body was gone. In fact, they thought that perhaps someone had stolen his body. But guess what? Even though the tomb was empty, it was actually filled with God's love for us. Just like in this picture, you can see the heart in the back. There is a very common Bible verse, one that a lot of people know, and it is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and anyone who believes in him will have eternal life, that will live forever. Jesus died on the cross for each and every one of us, and when he rose from the dead, he left the tomb filled with his love. He has risen. Hallelujah. So what can we do now? Well, we can share the love that God left for us that was in that tomb, and we can share it with each other. We can share it with people who don't know who God and Jesus is and what he did. In the bags that you got when you first came in, there's a heart sticker. But I have a few more that I want to give you before you go back to your seats. Excellent. So I want you to wear one, and I want you to share one. And when you share it, make sure you tell that person all about God and how much he loves you and loves them. 
Before we head back and I hand out the stickers, can we say a quick prayer together? Yeah. Great. So put your hands together if you like. Bow your heads. God, thank you for sending your son. For when he rose, the tomb was filled with a deep and never-ending love for us. I pray that each person with us today feels your love and your presence in their life. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So let's get you some stickers before you head back. When you have your sticker, you can head on back to your grown-up. Um, whoops, got that. These stickers do not want to stay in Miss Julie's hand today. We're going to start at the outside and work our way in. There. All right, when you have your sticker, you can go back and find your grown-up. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh. Of course your bunny can have a sticker too. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Praise you, holy God of all. Christ has risen. The tomb is empty. Praise and thank you, Jesus, for giving your life as a substitute for our sin-filled ones. The night before you died, Lord, you gave one last commandment to your disciples and to us, and that is to love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. By a great act of sacrifice, Lord, you set an example for us by laying down your life and dying on a cross so that we through your mercy and love, may enjoy the fullness of life. Although all of us may not have been born in a place of privilege and are able to give in a, of our surplus, however, all of us can give out of loving, caring, serving, and sharing of God's gifts to us, to others especially those in need. As we go about our daily lives, let us keep in mind and heart the greatest gift Jesus gave, and that was his life for us. He reached out to others with healing power, prayer, care, affirmation, and grace. And with that in mind, let us keep First of all, our, <clears throat> our pastors in prayer who have had a tremendous and wonderful week here at Glenmar. We will keep in mind the people uh, who will suffer and has suffered from the ship accident all over the world. We pray for Pastor Na this morning uh, he has a sadness in his family. We pray for the Lakitis family on the passing of Steve Lakitis. We f pray for the Marchinkos family on the passing of Bobby. We pray for the Crawford family on the passing of Paul Crawford. We pray for those who are going through health concerns and although you may not be listed on this, this sheet, you're still in our hearts and in our minds. Willa Brooks, 
Katie, the cousin of Gina Levine and Jamie, Chris Wessel, Lola Barrick, Henry, Ellen Burns' nephew, Avery, the six-year-old granddaughter of Sue and Jim Lyman. Again, we pray for cancer treatments, and we know cancer touches a lot of us. Bill Westervelt, Tommy, the brother of Don Shane, Tony Tacker, Shing Ling, Austin, uh, the great nephew of Terry Hansen, and Debbie Albrook. We also pray for our cities and our country and that we stay forward in God. Let us uh, repeat the Lord's Prayer. The Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. And now we will have the anthem on the third day.
beautiful. Thank you, choir. Please rise for the reading of the gospel if you are able. And this uh, particular message is coming from the message, Luke 24, uh, 1 through 12. At the crack of dawn on Sunday, the women came to the tomb carrying the burial spices they had prepared. They found the entrance stone rolled back from the tomb, so they walked in. But once inside, they couldn't find the body of the master Jesus. They were puzzled, wondering what to make of this. Then out of nowhere, it seemed two men, lights cascading over them, stood there. The women were awestruck and bowed down in worship. The men said, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He is not here, but raised up. Remember how he told you when you were still back in Galilee that he had to be handed over to sinners, be killed on a cross, and in three days rise up? <clears throat> then they remembered. Jesus' words. They left the tomb and broke the news to all this to the eleven and the rest. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them kept telling these things to the apostles. But the apostles didn't believe a word of it, thought that they were making it all up. But Peter jumped up to his feet and ran to the tomb. He sto stooped to look in and saw a few grave clothes. That's all. He walked away puzzled, shaking his head. Thanks be to the reading of the gospel. You may be seated. We've had a really wonderful Holy Week here at Glenmar Church, and I'm so grateful for all of the folks who did so much to make it so meaningful and special uh, for so many this week. But as I was thinking about what transpired during the last week of Jesus' life, a lot of it was not really that much of a surprise. Nothing that happened on Thursday of Holy Week was that big of a surprise. Um, Jesus gathered with his followers uh, to celebrate the Passover meal, to have uh, uh, food together. That's not a surprise. Sure, Jesus at one point started washing the disciples' feet, and that was noteworthy that the one who they called teacher and Lord would do a servant's task. But you wouldn't really say that was shocking. The sharing of the Passover meal, to be expected. At one point, Jesus said something strange. He compared himself to the Passover lamb and said, you know, uh, this is my body and this is my blood. But uh, that's interesting. But Jesus was always saying strange things like that, that you never could quite understand. And certainly... Nothing that happened on Friday was a surprise. The betrayal, the arrest, the trial, the execution. Sad mothers weeping for their sons. That's absolutely business as usual in a Roman province. And even on the news today, it wouldn't be that shocking. There were so many criminals and crackpots and Messianic pretenders. On Easter Sunday, the women brought burial spices to the tomb, which tells me they were fully expecting to find a body there. If they had any expectation of a risen Christ, one would assume they would have left the burial stuff at home and, I don't know, brought balloons or egg shakers or heart signs or something. 
Luke's account has a whole cascade of people who are just confused as could be. The women find the stone rolled away and they go into the tomb and they search around looking for a body that they had every reason to expect to find there. It says that they were puzzled. Then we have these, this encounter with these mysterious men who are bathed in light. And these were not some random visitors from the cemetery office. How do I know that? Because the women fell down and worshipped them. They were so shocked by what they experienced, they fell to their knees. And then the statement, why are you looking for the living one in a cemetery? He's not here, he's risen. And only then did they remember the business about being raised on the third day. And they made that connection. And they went back to tell the disciples. And they told them over and over. And the disciples thought they were making it up. Peter, ever the brave entrepreneurial disciple, decides he's going to investigate it himself. Because after all, who's going to take the word from a bunch of women? So he goes to investigate it himself. And he finds a few empty grave clothes. And even then, he doesn't know. He's shaking his head. He's puzzled. So... If Easter puzzles you, if you're not really sure what happened on Easter morning, if you, as you put on your tie or you get up early to come to church, in your heart of hearts, if there's a part of you that has a little trouble believing that Christ is risen, you're not alone. They didn't believe it either at first. They didn't know what to think about it either. It was scary and it was mysterious. And look, I think it would be easier sometimes, some Easter's, if I could get up here and proclaim something else to you other than Christ being risen. You know, something easier for us all to swallow, like Jesus is some kind of metaphor who was metaphorically raised. Or uh, Jesus was like a butterfly. Or Jesus was like a flower. Or Jesus was like a breath of spring, you know? It would be easier to suggest that Easter is something that we could even do ourselves if we're only loving enough of our own accord, you know? And Glenmar, you people are go-getters. If anybody could do Easter, you could do it. We'll have a roll the stone away team. I like a good cemetery, don't you? They're easier to manage. They're quiet. A body you can find is easier to handle. Gravestones have a lovely way of staying where you put them. I would love if that could be my Easter message to you. But here's the thing. Every year we bump up against this witness testimony. We bump up against Easter. And what we have is an empty tomb. And Jesus on the loose. I don't know what to do with that. Jesus on the loose is really hard to control. We've got wide-eyed women sharing what they saw over and over, if you would just believe us the first time. We've got disciples running back and forth, and we've got an empty tomb. This morning, this is the morning. That God set the world as we knew it upside down. Jesus should have been right where they put him. Thank you very much. And he's not here. He's risen. He's on the loose. He's on the move. He's out there. I always sort of chuckle to myself at uh, how hard we work to get here. And particularly I chuckle at 4 a.m. When my alarm goes off for the sunrise service. (laughs) And I make my way on the deserted street. 
to come and make my way through the wet grass and sit on those benches. Thank you to the scouts who made those. And uh, I chuckled to myself because we work so hard to get to a place that Jesus is not. You know, if metaphorically we're sort of symbolically gathering at a garden tomb, he's not there. The one place in the world he's not going to be on Easter morning. And I like Luke's account of Easter better than John's account. In Luke, there's no Jesus that gets mistaken for the gardener. It's a little tougher, right? If you notice, pastors run to preach about from John because you got you got Jesus that gets mistaken for somebody else who's calling people by name, who's standing there probably with dirt under his fingernails and everything. Not in Luke. In Luke, uh, we have angelic figures to explain things, but what we have is an empty tomb. Full stop. Deal with that. We don't know where Jesus is, but he's not among the dead. And then, it doesn't stop there. I wish I didn't have to believe Easter really happened. But people started having encounters with him everywhere. And a band of scared and scattered followers becomes preachers and evangelists who are willing even to be martyred for their faith. How does something like that happen? Well, it happens if the tomb is empty. That's how it happens. We've been doing a, a series called Witnesses to the Cross during Lent. And if you thought there were a lot of those, get ready for the witnesses to the risen Christ. It couldn't have been an idle tale because we have the women's, we have the women's witness. Mary and Joanna and Mary Magdalene and other women... And we have people who saw him on the road to Emmaus and on a beach when Peter went fishing. And in a locked room, a locked room full of church people afraid for their future. Hello. And suddenly Jesus is in the midst of them. Jesus keeps showing up. They experience the presence of the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread and the study of scripture. There are accounts of hundreds of eyewitnesses. More than the gospel writers or Paul could mention in their writings. And they all write as if it's obvious to everyone that there are so many eyewitnesses out there, we don't even need to list them all. And of course, we have the witness of the church that has lasted through all of these centuries to the present day. Easter Day has turned the whole world upside down, and Jesus is still in the business of changing lives. We tend to think about um, the Apostle Paul, you know, as if he were just around with the disciples. You know, he's just kind of in the mix. And... But he wasn't. He was a Roman citizen, a Pharisee among Pharisees. He held the coats for the ones who stoned Stephen an early Christian martyr. And on the road to Damascus, long after Easter, he had an encounter with the risen Christ. To hear him tell it, Jesus knocked him in the dirt to get his attention. And maybe it was a little like dying and a little like being born again. And after that, Paul changes his name from Saul, and he becomes the church's greatest evangelist. Could he have made all that up? I suppose, but then his entire life after that makes no sense whatsoever. Paul's entire life would suggest that it's true. Because Jesus lives, he's different. The world is different. And just... Look at this day today, in this place. Look at you. What are you doing here today? You had nothing better to do at 10.09 on a Sunday morning? 
Christians have the audacity to sing their Easter hymns in the present tense. Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Right? Yeah. We make the audacious claim that the whole world is not the same since that first Easter. Everything has changed. Not just in the past, but even today. We have witnesses today with a testimony of an encounter with the risen Christ. I was listening to a podcast, because that's what I do now instead of read long books. And um, <clears throat> there was an interview with a guy named Nicky Gumbel. And he is the founder of something called the Alpha Course, which several years ago was super popular. It's a series of classes for seekers that introduces people to the Christian faith in a really life-changing way. And he said, look, I was an atheist for most of my life. He also is very proud to say he was an attorney. I don't think those two are necessarily always linked at all. Uh, shout out to my brothers and sisters at the bar. But he was an atheist, and he said, and I'm quoting, I thought Christians were weird and off-putting, and they always seemed to just kind of smile at you, and I wasn't sure what they were smiling at. Then he had a couple friends who became Christians, and he thought, oh no, I've got to help them. I've got to get them out of this Christian thing. And so he started reading the Bible. And he didn't start with Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. You can do that, but you will fall off the wagon by numbers. <laughs> and I don't really think that's God's will for you. So he started with the Gospels. He read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And he kind of kept on reading. And he said somewhere in his reading, the person Jesus that he was reading about sort of emerged and he had an encounter with Jesus, and he thought, oh my gosh, this is true. This is true. And then he thought, oh no, this is true. <laughs> because if it's true, I'm going to have to follow this Jesus guy. And he thought, well, that's it. My life's going to be miserable. So much for sleeping in on Sundays. But what he discovered was, in Jesus... This void that he didn't know he had in his life became filled. This hunger that he didn't have a name for suddenly went away. And that following this Jesus was somehow the key to abundant life. Friends, Jesus is still today turning graves into gardens. And we're witnesses. He's turning people into Stephen ministers and choir members and Habitat housing builders. He's making people into folks who come to church for Bible study in small groups. He's turning water into wine every day around here. He's healing people's broken places. He's showing up where we would least expect to find him. He's riding with hospice nurses. I've seen him. He's riding with firefighters. He's in the back of police cars. He's hanging out in jails and hospitals and boardrooms and halfway houses and government cubicles. Separation of church and state and everything. Life and life abundant. Salvation, wholeness, freedom, love, forgiveness. And also this uncomfortable nudging of the Holy Spirit that, 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 that tugs on us to say, why do you keep living like I'm still in the tomb? This Holy Spirit that says to us, I'm up. Maybe it's time for you to rise up too. I'm resurrected. Why are you still in the tomb? With a risen Christ, maybe it's time to let my spirit rise up too. 
Maybe it's time to let go of some of those weights that have been holding me back, that separate us from God and from each other. With a risen Christ, maybe it's time to use the gifts we've been given in ways that please Him. With a risen Christ, maybe it's time for us to rise up and get serious about the place that Jesus has in our lives. The place that church has in our lives. It could be time. It could be time to stop setting up camp in dead places and to experience the love of God and let it change our life. The Holy Spirit that raised Jesus up from the dead, it raises us up too. And not just after we die, but starting right now. My buddy Ginger was having a bad day. I had been a pastor for a whole year, so you know I knew nothing. And um, Ginger, though, had been a pastor for a long time, and she had a lot of sense and wisdom. She was leading a small group for new pastors like me, and we would meet at her church. And it was on like a Thursday morning or a Tuesday morning, and uh, you know, one of those tea mornings, you know. And she came in one morning, and she was just so stressed out. And that just tells you it's a day beginning with T. I just didn't know it at the time. That's how it is for us pastors. And um, so she comes in, and she's trailing clouds of stress and caffeine and paper and frustration. And she says, this job is so hard. When is it going to get easier? You know, I can't get this church to behave and... Uh, I don't know. When is it going to get easier? And we're like, we don't know. We just got here. Is that a rhetorical question? Is this going to be on the test? We don't know. And she said, all right. How would you handle this? And we're going, oh my gosh. And then she told a serious story about a tragedy that a family in her congregation was experiencing. And it was terrible. And she told the whole story, and then she said, what in the world does the church have to offer at a time like this? Can't make it better, can't bring it back. What does the church have to offer? And we're sitting in this awkward silence, and somebody says in the piddliest little voice you ever heard, Easter, Easter, and Ginger, her head spun around like somebody had stole something. She just was like, Shoo! and she said, what did you say? And then the voice said a little louder, uh, Easter, we have Easter to offer. Easter is a reminder that the worst day is not the last day. And that God will have the last word. And that last word to us is life and love. And it's not just at the end of our life that we have a heavenly reward. It's that we can see evidence of Easter tugging on the here and now. Maybe our job on this Easter Sunday is to be a witness to Jesus at work in the world, in all the places that we see him. Maybe it's our job to rise up and go from here and carry a message that the tomb is empty and there is no good Friday beyond the reach of God's redemption. God has people that God wants to bless and God wants to use you to be part of it. God has tombs that God wants to crack open. God has lives that God wants to change. And Glenmar is called to be a part of that. And guess what? We're Glenmar. God means us. It's our job to share the news that the tomb is empty. 
And once you witness something like that, the new life that Easter offers, once that shows up in your life, this joy is sort of planted in your heart, you know, and it wells up and this smile begins and and it's like the start of a belly laugh. And the next thing you know, you're running and laughing and you can't even feel the ground under your feet. Friends, Easter is not the end of something. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of a whole new life. And if you'll let it be, it's the beginning of a whole new world. Rise up because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Now let us continue our worship with a collection of our tithes and offerings. And if you're worshiping with us online uh, and our service is a blessing to you, you can even give online as well. Will the ushers please come forward?
person that believes in giving a person their roses when they can smell them. And uh, I'd like to say how awesome. Thank you for that powerful sermon today. It made my day. Uh, I'll close in prayer. When everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. The sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of the resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope and joy will live in us each day and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, Be Thou. Uh, friends, as we, before we sing our closing hymn, I wanted to let you know that in a few minutes we're going to sing the Hallelujah Chorus. And you can sing it right from right where you are, as loud as you want to sing it, as badly or as well as you can. <laughs> and I think the Lord smiles on that. Uh, and if and if you want to come forward and sing it next to somebody that sings it beautifully in the choir, um, you are welcome to do that. I think they have copies of the score uh, available to you. But again, I don't think it's required to please God to have the score. Um, but I want to let you know to come forward uh, during this, this hymn we're about to sing so that you can be in place for the great hallelujah.
I wanted to lift up to you as we take our leave from this place that uh, if you come back next week, it will be easier to find a seat. <laughs> so come on back. If, if this has been a blessing to you, um, next week we will start our uh, series on uh, stories of the resurrection. And um, we're going to look at ways that Easter continues to affect our lives, our real lives today. And so I hope that you'll come out for that. And uh, I hope that you will... Uh, know that if you want to come to this building tomorrow, it will be locked, and I can't roll the stone away. So uh, if you need anything, get it today. Uh, I also wanted to let you know that if you have purchased flowers that you wish to take home, and you're at this service, you can go ahead and take it. We've put names of folks that have bought flowers on the flower pots, so you should find a a flower with your name on it if you wish to take it with you after this service. Uh, I think that is everything that I had. Uh, go in peace, friends, to love and serve the Lord, to love and serve your neighbor. Go as Easter people in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>